Okay, so uh, part two of shockwaves. Uh, yesterday, the I did a little bit of shockwaves. I can't remember if I've actually put this bit on YouTube yet, uh, or I don't know. I'm losing it. Right. What you need to know is that it is a beautiful day outside. The waves are absolutely primo. There are three foot and peeling left, and I'm stuck in here. So I'm going a little bit nuts. Back to short waves, right? Said before that we've got faster air. The air gets accelerated. It, it then tries to. It forms a queue, basically, right? And it, it can't accelerate anymore because there's other air going as fast as it can. Air can only travel at 760 miles per hour. Air, air particles can only bump into each other at low altitude at 760 miles an hour. That's as fast as they can go. And when they when they go high up and there's less air particles, the the sound waves can travel even slower. So, people often get stuck between the sound waves and the shock waves, okay? And basically, that, that, they're kind of the same thing, right? But when you see the diagram of the shock waves radiating out, that's got nothing to do with this, okay? This is like. To try and think of it as, as this is kind of. We'll stick with the term shock wave rather than sound wave for now. So, the A, this part here, right? is actually it's been accelerated up to right and it is traveling faster than the speed of sound so when i said before air can't travel faster than the speed of sound it can because this isn't air actually traveling this is relative airflow okay so remember in reality all of this airflow that we're talking about is actually standing still and the wing is moving through the air so what we're seeing is as the wing moves forward it accelerates air and as it accelerates air, it, it, it does accelerate air faster than the speed of sound. Okay, so that air is being pushed over the wing and it kind of goes, it, it, it gets constricted and it, it accelerates as it gets constricted and it goes faster than the speed of sound momentarily and then it realises that it can't go faster than the speed of sound and it all bumps up into a big queue. So what we'll find is, and this is part of the criteria that you have to answer for, it's probably not at all actually, I'll just... We'll leave it there for now. Okay, right. So this part, right, this part here, right, is supersonic airflow. What you find is before the maximum camber of the wing you'll find this bubble of supersonic airflow where the air is being accelerated faster than the speed of sound okay and then it forms into this shock wave so the red bit is the shock wave okay and that is a normal shock wave when we're coming to engines and stuff for the um, distinction part we'll start talking about normal and oblique shock waves this is a normal shock wave it is 90 degrees to the relative airflow right normal shock wave 90 degrees to the relative airflow right relative airflow this part is supersonic right and then after the shock wave right just to sort of the robot's gone I forget what everything else I wrote on there right so after the shock wave we will have okay now for your assignments for I think it's past point 12 right you you will be asked to um, explain the flow uh, before and after a shock wave right so you'll really have to define and explain the flow before and after the shock wave and it's very simple that diagram there okay that diagram there that shows the shock wave the supersonic airflow and the subsonic flow and if you want to add anything else on right, we can also at the back end here you will have at the training edge don't have it all the way down right just at the training edge just around about here right you'll have separated flow Right now, there's a difference between turbulence and turbulent flow, and I've just looked at some of the powerpoints on uh, Moodle, and because turbulence uh, is in the syllabus, there's a lot on turbulence there. 
for the assignment criteria and things, there's no assignment criteria that deals with turbulence. It's just one of those things that's in the curriculum, but doesn't really come into it. Now, turbulent flow, okay, is different to turbulence. Turbulence is caused by something. Turbul turbulent flow is caused by the flow of the wing going through the air, and it causes turbulent flow. But turbulence, they're essentially the same thing when you look at them and when you study them. But it's it. You can have turbulence off off um, off sea cliffs. You can have it off off hillsides. You know, there's different types of turbulence out there. You can have it off off behind engines and stuff. So when we talk about turbulent flow, we're going to call it separated flow uh, from this, and it's the same thing. Separated flow, turbulent flow, basically the same thing for for your for your purposes. Right. Enough waffle. So we've got a shot wave. The shot wave in the previous lesson we said. Shot wave builds up because the air cannot overtake the air. The air is trying to go as fast as it can, and it gets to the point. At this point, it realizes, "Hang on, I can't go supersonic," and it forms a queue, and it can't go any faster. So it builds up into a shot wave. These are air particles that cannot accelerate any faster over the wing, and they build up into the shot wave. And the shot wave will stay in the same. If you stay at the same speed, the shot wave will stay at the same part, and you can actually see. The area behind the shot wave. The area behind the shot wave, because of the pressure changes, you get cloud forming. Okay, so the shot wave itself you can't really see that well, but where the density of the air changes in the shot wave, you can see this. So when you see, uh, look on YouTube, look uh, breaking the sound barrier, supersonic air wave, supersonic shot waves. You see loads of American and British fighters now going through the sound barrier, and you'll see a big cone, a shock cone around the aeroplane. Where that shock cone starts is generally at the top curve of the wing, right? It'll start forming there and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, I've done a video using um, War Thunder. I haven't unlocked the, the jets yet in War Thunder. I've unlocked a, a Hawker Hunter, which for the purposes, you know, of you guys, just to show you stuff, I've got to climb to 10,000 feet and go on a dive and it takes us 20 minutes to do so. Yeah, uh, but it, I'll, there's a video coming. I may I may actually put it in now with a shock corner. Right back to Billy basics. What do you need to know? You need to know that there's an aerofoil, there's a shock wave, and and at in transonic flight, which is slightly coming up to the speed of sound. You haven't actually gone fully supersonic yet, or at this at supersonic speed at, at Mach one. We'll talk about Mach in a minute. Um. There's a bubble of supersonic airflow in front of the shock wave and there is subsonic flow behind. So the air behind the shock wave is moving slower than the air in front of it. There's a diagram there, right? Stick a bit of separated flow just at the just at the back here. Right? Everything you need to know about P12 is on that page there. Right then. Now I'm talking to certain people. Do not get it the wrong way around. I cannot stress how much that tests my patience where people are saying there's the stuff you need to know and they'll write subsonic there and supersonic there and then look at me like it's perfectly okay to do that. Oh, I just got it the wrong way around. Okay, if you make those sort of mistakes in aircraft engineering and you get things the wrong way around, okay, please don't go into bomb disposal, right? Oh, I've got the blue wire mixed up with the red wire. Everybody's dead. Okay, so silly mistakes, check your work, okay, look at it and read it, please read it before you hand it in. Remember, if you are lucky enough to get a referral opportunity, yeah, don't burn up those opportunities for things like getting that the wrong way around. You can't get your sub and your super the, on the right side. Supersonic before, subsonic after it. Why am I banging on about that? Because in, in the past assignments I've had handed in, people have got it the wrong way around quite a lot. Yes, it seems to be something that people do. I, I don't know why. And, it, and it, it generates unnecessary work for me, unnecessary work for you. Please take, check your work before you hand it in. Okay, right. Um, I'm going to cut that there nice and short. That's the flow either side of a shot wave. All right, supersonic in front, subsonic behind, separate flow. Please, if you're struggling with that, why can that go faster and why does this happen and why does all this happen, please email me. This is the basic version, okay. I will be doing some more in-depth lessons in, in a bit. Um, yeah, so don't forget to email us if you're not sure. Thanks very much for watching that. The next thing we'll look forward to that you can research is we're going to do how that shock wave moves 
as you go faster and what happens on the bottom of the wing and how that affects the balance of the aircraft and that is the dreaded pass point 13 or dreaded criteria P13 that a lot of people struggle with okay even BTEC struggle with that because technically speaking the movement of the shot wave over the wing the general trend is the shot wave goes back but BTEC ask you why it momentarily moves for the same why does it move forward that I would reword that to why does it momentarily move forward okay it's all to do with things like terms to, to search on, on YouTube and things you can look at things called Mac Tuck okay so Mac Tuck that's what we're going to talk about next we also need to talk about Mac numbers we need to talk about the sound barrier and all other sorts of stuff which is coming in a video soon thanks very much for watching hope you're staying safe out there I'll see you uh, hopefully sooner rather than later okay bye <laughs>